Hey all, welcome to the 8th episode of DS101 series. In this episode, we will be talking about partitioning. So, uh, previously, uh, in multiple previous episodes, we have talked about replication and transactions. And I guess, like, I have covered uh, 2 to 3 episodes within all those sections. You can uh, check the playlist. Uh, you can find, like, 3-4 uh, episodes under transactions, 2-3 to three episodes under replications. And now, we will be focusing upon partitioning or like it's also called sharding so let me write it down here so what is partitioning uh okay let me change this to the text that is that is better okay cool So partitioning or sharding. So what is partitioning? So uh, basically what happens is that you generally store your data in a particular machine or basically in a database, right? So in general, what happens is that a client can store data in a database and that's basically it's, it's present in a machine, right? So we can say that it stores in a database which is uh, present in a machine so it, you can consider this entire thing as a single entity right so clients can send the request to store the data they can query the database to get some data as well but now here the thing changes so this looks good if we have some amount of data but if the if the size of the data increases like if they are if there are enormous data then what can what we can do is that instead of storing entire data in a single machine we can partition the database we can like distribute this into multiple different different machines so that is the concept of partitioning that is basically called sharding so in this episode we're gonna discuss that let me scroll it down a bit here okay so now what should we do when we have enormous amount of data now we can again expect the client to send request to the database which can be a like which can be a black box thing which will be responsible for accepting the request so suppose this is the uh, system or a black box which accept the request of a client right it can be the request can be related to querying the data the request can be related to storing the data like basically querying and storing can be this yeah so uh, basically querying the data the storing the data right all of these can be there and this system can handle that but behind that this can be there can be enormous amount of complexity so since we are storing a lot of data we can assume that we have shards of databases so let's assume that this is the this is one instance of database this is another instance of database right and this is yet another instance of another data of the database right now all of these databases belong to different different machines so let's say that this is the first machine this is the second machine and this is the third machine right so all of them belong to three different entities right so this is the, the this is the concept behind uh, sharding here. What we are trying to do is that, like, uh, just a second. Okay. So what we are trying to do is uh, do is that we'll get the request from the client, but the client does not know the complexity behind the system. So system can have different different shards, and it can decide which shard will be responsible for storing a particular item of the data and which shard will be responsible for querying receiving the queries and answering those queries right so this is the this is the whole concept of uh, sharding or partitioning here now we looked previously that we can uh, if there is an enormous amount of data we can perform sharding we can move we can uh, replicate we can have multiple different different machines which can have their own instance of databases and we can store the data within those instances in order to scale or in order to support that amount of huge load or that amount of enormous data right but now what we will do is that we will try to understand that what are the complexities which can arrive 
when we perform sharding so sharding is like it's good it's it can be it can be a possible solution but maintaining those shards right uh making the data like querying the database or storing the database while maintaining all those shards is a complex process right so what we'll try to understand here is that what are the complexities that can arrive when we perform sharding right So uh, let's understand this here. Uh, suppose if a client, right, me being a client trying to query a sharded database, right? So we can assume that we have uh, one shard here. We can have one shard here, right? We can have one shard here. So there are like uh, three shards present in the three machines right i'm gonna mention it here m1 m2 and m3 this makes sense right we discussed it previously as well now what 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 is happening here is that client is trying to query a, a, a particular amount of data right uh, suppose a uh, transact a uh, client is uh, trying to query some amount of data right this can be some amount of data a uh, client is trying to query but this data is not only residing on a single uh, instance or in a single uh, database instance right or in a single shard it, it it can be it is suppose a part of the data is existing in one shard part of the data is in second shard and the part of the data is in third shard so the response so suppose that uh, the part of the response say that like suppose we have response uh, part one is present here uh, response part 2 is present here and response part 3 is present here so what 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 this what the system has to do is that it has to accept the query of the client and it tries to it has to query the all the three instances to get the data right so now instead of querying one instant it has to query all these three instances or shards and query the desired response or desired part of the response for the client and then it has to get all these responses right it the, client, the system will get all these responses so maybe this response part one can be r1 the response part two can be r2 and the response part three can be r3 and now once it has received all these three responses it has to join this response right it has to join this response join these three responses back into a single response right which can then be sent back to the client so this is the total complexity here which is involved when a client tries to query a sharded or a partition database right so you see that like we are querying we are getting three uh, pieces of responses from the three uh, different shards of the database and then the system is trying to join these responses into a single block of response which can then finally be returned to the client now let's understand one ideal condition that can like that we can expect in sharding so um, i'll just scroll this a bit down right here so let's look on for a ideal situation here so by ideal situation what do i mean is that suppose a client is trying to query a distributed or a like partition database right so if me being a client i'm trying to query so suppose we have three partitions here so suppose we have partition one we have partition two and we have partition three it's very similar to what we saw previously the database instance with one machine i have just tried to combine it up in a single block naming them partition one two and three so suppose a client is trying to query or suppose a lot of clients suppose it's not one client we have uh, maybe c2 we have maybe c3 and so forth and so on suppose we have n number of clients here and all of them are trying to perform some queries here so suppose uh, uh, if this client is trying to perform query on these like on all these shards what uh, we can expect with sharding is that our like our queries can be distributed evenly to all these shards so suppose if we have a load of maybe uh, 10 to the power 5 uh, requests per second then 
uh, maybe we can expect that whatever load it is it is distributed evenly which which means that it gets 10 to the power by 3 request per second same goes for this as well right and same goes for this as well right but this is an ideal situation this does not happen in real case and it is very difficult to make sure that the queries are evenly distributed within these partitions so that is one challenge this is one ideal solution where we expect that like ideally what we are trying to ideally what we are trying to say here is that uh, suppose a uh, number of partitions is equal to n and load on the system is suppose maybe q queries per second then we are saying that each partition should have a load of q by n queries per second but that will not be the case this is like this this ideal situation is very difficult to achieve and that's what we are trying to like we're trying to see here further that like what are the difficulties which can happen or how what how we can like uh, shard or partition a database through primary keys and uh, what are the difficulties which can be like which can be seen and what are the different ways to shard let's quickly discuss another concept uh, we talked about we will discuss about partitioning in primary keys so basically we will try to like partition uh, database or partition data within the database right to their primary keys right so let me quickly write it down here okay scroll down okay perfect So it is a uh, partition by primary keys slash indexes right so what uh, what do you mean by primary key so every data within a database is uniquely identified by their primary keys which means that if if you have thousand rows right within a database then or within a table then all of these rows will have unique primary keys for them so it's it can't be the case that like for a primary key there can be two more than one rows matching within the within the particular table so that is the concept behind the primary keys and we are trying to index or we are trying to shard or partition through the through the primary keys or primary indexes so let's let's understand a situation so suppose we are trying to we have a cs course here right we have a computer science course and a lot of so this course is pretty hot like a lot of people want to join this course due to which a large amount of students are trying to register themselves so the amount of students are huge right a lot of students are trying to register themselves into the cs course and we have a database to like basically store the entry of those registered students and since we have a lot of uh, students coming up we are planning to shard that database by the name of the students so we are assuming that name is a primary key right is the primary key of the of the particular um, students or uh, the, the student can be uniquely identified by their names and we will try to shard that with their names so names can be considered as a primary key here right so what we are trying to do is that we have maintained a shard so suppose this is one system here okay just scroll it down a bit okay we have a system here and we have different different shards so let's assume that we have partition one or shard one which holds the students with names in the range starting from a to c right we have another shard which is again storing the name which is like happening in the range of maybe uh, d to j and so forth and so on we can have another shard which can have name in the range of k to o and so forth and so on we can have another shard which is in the range of e to s and at the end we have another shard which has uh, names in the range of maybe t to z right so there are you can consider we have four shards or four partition which are storing the data like this right so this is the like uh, architecture here now what happens is that suppose if a client uh, tries to query say that okay uh, like i'm i'm a client I'm, and i'm try to like check that whether i am registered for a course or not and the name of the client suppose the name of the client is sorov right so the client sorov is trying to like understand that whether he is registered to the 
particular course or not so this request will basically hit the system or the gateway and this gateway will try to understand that how to uh, basically look for this particular uh, request or how to identify this particular query so it will try to talk to the partition and basically this request will be directed to that partition which holds the primary key right which holds the name with who has which has like starting with s right since my name starts with s this query will be directed to this particular partition because this partition holds the uh, students which have like which have name starting from p or s right so it will go to this partition it will try to ask that hey like since you are holding all the uh, all the name of the student starting with p and s like try to tell me that whether uh, the student with the name sort of has registered for the course or ideally the student name sort of is present in the entry of this of the database or not and then this partition will try to return a response right and then this response will be further directed to the directed back to the client and this response can be a simple yes or no or maybe the returned entry of the student sort of if that exists if that not then it can be an empty entry or it can be a simple yes or no saying that whether that student whether that uh, student sort of has registered uh, into the into the course or not or basically whether the entry of sort of exists within the database or not you can also try to understand how the names are stored within a particular partition so if we have to like drill down a bit more i'll just put it i'll just move it right here so that we can like drill it down so suppose we have to understand that how partition 4 is trying to store names right so it can be the case that every partitions might be storing names right in an alphabetical order right or sorted by alphabets right so sorted by names of basically alphabets so what does i mean what what do i mean uh, saying this is that all the names of the like the entries are sorted alphabetically so from p to s here it can be like one can be pan another can be peter right another can be sam here it can be sora here it can be susan right all of these names here with along with their uh, respective metadata for the student entries right so this is this is how the structure can look like where every like you can see that these names are like sorted alphabetically here and hence if if i if this partition has to like get receives a query to look for a student with entry sort of it can easily perform like this query because the list is alphabetically sorted it can easily easily perform a uh, lookup right look up within this machine also uh, with this uh, particular uh, uh, way of storing the data particular flare of storing the data uh, the range queries become pretty fast so it can easily perform range queries over the over each partitions because the data is stored in a in the form of a sorted order right so if, if, if i tell the user that hey give me like all the names starting with p right so with this particular form of uh, a particular way of storing uh, the partition can easily give me all the student lists whose names are starting with p now we discussed range based sharding right we tried to shard uh, the data items on the partition on the primary key uh, in the form of like range right we try to store a particular range of primary keys in a particular shard or in a particular partition now we'll try to understand a classic problem here which can happen in range based sharding and that is called hotspots so hotspots in sharding let's let's try to understand that first i'm gonna write it down hotspots in sharding or partitioning right so let's understand hotspots in sharding or partitioning let me center it here so uh, let's first quickly understand what is uh, hotspots in sharding so suppose if you if you have a like if you have a sh uh, system which has multiple partitions right so suppose you have like maybe five partitions here uh, you can call it p1 p2 p3 p4 and p5 now the thing is that suppose uh, one partition got extremely loaded by the data right or some partition is like uh, 
like handling the requests handling a huge amount of request while the rest of the partitions are not right so it can be the case like for suppose for an example this partition p3 is handling the load from india region right and the rest of the partitions are handling the uh, uh, the load from other 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 different countries so maybe it can be from us or maybe it can for it can be from a different country maybe japan and so forth and so on it can be like all of them can be handling uh, the load from different countries and suppose at the time of world cup right at the time of world cup finals so world cup finals suppose uh, cricket icc cricket world cup finals and the matches like matches something india versus some other countries and in that case there can be a huge uh, huge chances that this particular partition p3 which is like handling the load from india region can be like overloaded right can be overloaded right so this is particular this this can be a like a classic situation where uh, this partition this p3 partition can be considered as a hotspot here right so within this particular uh, sh all these shards p3 can be the hotspot and rest of the shards are receiving a very considered very low amount of load and hence these all all the other shards are left unutilized while p3 is like extremely loaded with the with the request or with the data so that this is the this is the basic concepts of hotspots we understood the hotspot in sharding now let's try to understand how this hotspot can happen in our previous example so i'm going to scroll it down here let's uh, uh, earlier we have an example of a cs course where students were trying to register into the course so now this time what will happen is that like earlier what we used to do is that we partitioned the student data by the name but now this time we'll try to partition the student data on the basis of timestamp or on the basis of day on which on the particular day on which they are trying to register into the cs course so what we are trying what what the concept is here is uh, So the concept here is that a student can try to register themselves. So a student can try to register themselves within the CS course, right? And we have a particular seven-day registration period. So we have a seven day registration period saying that like within this seven within this uh, a range of seven day within this interval of seven day the students have to get registered otherwise they will not be able to register themselves so we have like opened this from day one basically day one to day seven so now what what a student can do or what uh, what a student can do is that they can register themselves within this period so suppose we have a like a system where we will have partitions so ideally we will gonna have seven partitions so p3 p4 and so forth and so on we will have seven partitions where every partitions will be storing the data of the student entry on a particular day so ideally p1 partition p1 will have data on day one partition p2 will have on data on day th day two so on day three day four and at the end on day seven so this is the concept here i'll just try to zoom it a little bit out so that you guys can clearly see this okay this looks good so yeah so this is the concept here we are trying to like uh, get the students registered within this particular like within this particular day period and we have seven partitions handling the registration on each and every day now what happened is that this like the uh, people the the cs course instructor says that on day three whosoever is trying to register will get an 80 percent discount right will get an 80 percent discount on the course price so now what happens is that people will people are going crazy the students are going crazy what they did is that a lot of lots a lots and lots of students try to register themselves on day three to get that particular discount due to which the number of the amount of uh, student entries which partition p3 is storing is like is huge as compared to other partitions and that's why this partition p3 can be considered as a hotspot here why hotspot because on day three we had a discount of 80 percent and since we had a discount of 80 percent a lot of students uh, try to register themselves on a particular day three 
and since p3 partition 3 was storing all the student entries registered on day 3 uh, the partition p3 will have a lot of lots and lots of data as compared to other partitions